What's up, you guys? Welcome to Sector for Nerds, and welcome to another episode of Star Wars The Clone Wars Retro Discussions. Today, we're going to be talking about Season 1, Episode 8, Bomb Bad Jedi. This episode was directed by Jesse Yeh and written by Kevin Rubio, Stephen Melching, and Henry Gilroy. We got three writers for this one. My goodness. The cookie for this episode, heroes are made by the times. Short, sweet, and to the point. And now, intro guy, take it away. The Clone War threatens the unity of the Republic as battles rage across the galaxy. More worlds succumb to the seductive lure of the Separatists and leave the Republic. On a vital mission of peace, Senator Padme Amidala journeys to the Outer Rim world of Rhodia, desperate to ensure its loyalty remains to the Republic. Thank you, intro guy. That must be a tongue twister. Succumb to the seductive lore of the Separatists. I feel, try saying that like three times fast. I ain't gonna be able to do it. But this episode is a big deal because this is an episode where we get to see several familiar characters that we've seen from the prequel movies for the first time in this show. And the first one is Jar Jar, voiced by the actor who played him in the movies, Ahmed Best. Now, Ahmed Best doesn't voice Jar Jar in all the episodes. He doesn't even voice him for all the episodes in season one, they have a few different voice actors, I think. But this is one of the ones where they were able to get him. George was very adamant that Jar Jar be put in the Clone Wars, be put in this time period. Now listen, growing up as a prequel fan, like watching these movies at, I think it was like six years old, seven years old, I was a huge fan of Jar Jar Binks. I thought he was hilarious. I can understand, right, where people that were, you know, grew up during the original trilogy were big fans of that, would look at Jar Jar and be like, well, what the heck is this? And I think George has said this before, but Jar Jar was meant to appeal to the children. Clearly it worked on me, because I always thought he was funny. And especially in this episode of Clone Wars, I thought he was hilarious. Another first-time character that we get in this show is Newt Gunray. Newt Gunray was like one of the main villains of The Phantom Menace. The attire that they used for Newt Gunray in this episode was based on his look from Attack of the Clones. This is something that Killian Plunkett talked about in the featurette for this episode. And I do like that they put Gunray here because it gives us a different villain for us to go after, especially because the majority of this season so far, the only villain that we've really gone after is Grievous. So kind of switching up a bit, it's like, all right, this is cool. And this is our first time seeing the planet Rogue as well. This is the home world of the Rodians, right? And really the big Rodian that I remember at the time, like before the Clone Wars, would have been Greedo, the scene where Han definitely shot first. One of the aspects of Rodia that I really enjoyed was the fact that they lived in these dome bubbles. I thought that was pretty cool. And apparently that was like a last minute decision made by George Lucas, at least according to the featurette. I could just imagine George being in a meeting, but like, oh, you know, this is just, uh, this seems like just an average planet. We gotta make it uh, shape out a little bit better. We need something to make it stand out. Let's let's put in some bubbles. We'll just make bubbles, giant bubbles. My attempt at a George Lucas impression. All right, there's one thing, there's one more thing we need to talk about before we get into the episode itself, and that's just Padme. I've been doing bits ever since we started this show, right? Y'all, I'm sure, have seen them if you've watched the other episodes. Look, when I first started watching this show, I'm pretty sure I was like eight years old, right? I ain't eight years old anymore. I'm a dude who's in his early 20s. So sometimes you kind of just, I don't know, notice things that you may not notice as a child. Look, all I'm going to say is I have to ask the question, right? To Dave, to George, to whoever worked on this. Was the objective to just make Padme look as hot as possible? Was that the goal here? Like, was George sat there in a meeting going, oh, we have to make Padme look sexy for all the young teenagers and adults that are out there? Look, anybody that watched the Clone Wars back in the day, when if, whether they were in their early 20s, whether they were a teenager, you know, whatever. Did, did y'all look at Padme and be like, Oh, wow. Because look, when, when you look at Attack of the Clones, right, or when you look at any of the prequel movies and you see Padme, look, obviously, Natalie Portman is a very beautiful woman. And there's definitely moments in those movies, right, where I'm looking at her attire and it's like, okay, clearly George wanted her to stand out a little bit more here, or maybe not so much here. But it feels like even in, like, Padme's, like, normal attire, it feels like there are certain features that they might have been trying to make stand out. The hologram picture that I always show from that Clone Wars movie, I feel like is the biggest example. I could be wrong. I could be way off. 
But like I said, I ain't eight years old anymore. And look, part of it is just me doing a bit, all right? Like, I'm not that obsessed with Padme's animated look, all right? Part of that was just a bit. But there is also part of me that went like, Hmm, okay, so I see what we might be doing here. But I feel like we've gone a bit now without actually diving into the episode itself, so let's get started, shall we? I want to talk about the music real quickly as well, and just how incredible it was in this episode. Like, especially that theme when Padme is landing on Rhodia and then she goes to meet with Senator Farr. Like, oh, that was amazing. Unfortunately, though, getting to Rhodia isn't as uh, smooth of a ride as you'd like to think it would be because Jar Jar ends up pressing a button and it sends the ship off course and Padme has to put the ship back on course. Meanwhile, like, she's supposed to be in contact with Chancellor Palpatine here because he's all upset that Padme has gone into the enemy territory, into the Outer Rim, all by herself. And she's like, look, his people are starving. We can't just solve all our problems by throwing troops at them. Like, I want to seek a diplomatic solution here. You call this a diplomatic solution? No, I call it aggressive negotiations. But yeah, we're introduced to Anaconda Far, or as he's referred to throughout the entire episode, Uncle Anno. I guess him and Padme have a past, right? Like, they've been friends since Padme was a little girl when he was her father's, like, most important ally in the Senate. And this is a dude who, I mean, it's obviously portrayed, right? He's the leader of Rhodia. He's the leader of his people. And he's obviously very upset because his people are starving. And he's like, look, where was the Republic when our ships were attacked by pirates? But what if the pirates that attacked Far's fleet of supply ships is a certain pirate that we see in a few episodes down the line? That would have been funny. I smell profit. <laughs> but it turns out that this dude has made an alliance with the Separatists. He's joined up with Newt Gunray. A bunch of battle droids come out of nowhere and trap Padme. And then the battle droids make their way to Jar Jar and Freepio, who are on the ship. And uh, eventually a crab droid gets involved too. And I think this is our first time that we see a, a crab droid in this animation as well. We see them in the Revenge of the Sith movie. When you're playing against crab droids in the Revenge of the Sith video game, I remember that being a massive pain in the butt. After he defeats the crab droid, right? And he, and yes, I said that correctly, Jar Jar defeated a crab droid by sending it to the depths of the ocean. Jar Jar just like puts his elbow up on the control pad and the claw that had a uh, 3PO on it, it dropped him, but then it also moved into position right over the ship and smashes the ship to pieces. And 3PO's just like, well, there goes our ship. But 3PO and Jar Jar are like, all right, what do we do now? And 3 Feels like, well, let's just contact the clone troopers. And Jar Jar clicks another button. It opens up a closet that has a Jedi robe in it. Now, I feel like I've seen that Jedi robe before. It looks familiar. Oh my gosh, it's Mace Windu's. No, I'm kidding. It's Anakin's. It's totally Anakin's. And Jar Jar puts on the robe and it's like, all right, let's go rescue Padme. The unlikely hero trying to rescue the damsel in distress. That's kind of what this becomes. Although Padme proves she's not a damsel in distress and we will get to that shortly. Because before that, a battle droid notices Jar Jar and Newt Gunray gets freaked out because he's like, oh my gosh, it's a Jedi. And then Jar Jar just runs down into the underwater like there's a sewer there and he just like opens the latch and dives in. But then he realizes quickly that he's not alone down there and there's a giant sea monster monster there as well. I believe it's called the Quizel Ma. I didn't know that actually until I went back and rewatched through that featurette. I remember you have to fight that thing in the Jedi Alliance DS game because I remember when we were when we were playing through those games. Oh my gosh, those were times, guys. Y'all should go back and watch those videos if you haven't yet. They're some of my most viewed videos on the channel. But going back to Padme, Padme gets captured, right? And she's obviously very upset with her uncle and upset with the fact that he's now a traitor. But Padme's like, all right, there's a Jedi here. This this gives me an opening. And so Padme, she like grabs something out of her her, her boot, right, to help her un, uh, like uncuff herself from the chains. Which, you know what, it makes perfect sense, right? Like Padme's always like getting herself into trouble, getting herself captured, right? So always having a way out, it, it makes sense for Padme. I mean, look at her in Attack of the Clones, right? The way she got herself out of the, the chains in the arena. Once again, shout out to Matt, Matthew Wood with the comedy battle droids, but when he opens up the door and he's like, there's no Jedi in here, but wait, there's no prisoner in here. Matthew Wood and his comedy battle droids never cease to amaze me. Padme frees 3PO and she's like, go back to the ship, call for help. And 3PO's like, the ship has been destroyed. And they just have like the best back and forth dialogue in this entire episode. Battle droids? No. Jar Jar? Jaja. Gunray kind of double crosses Ono here because 
He's like, look, Viceroy, when are the ships gonna arrive? My people are starving. And he says, oh, they haven't arrived yet. But then immediately afterwards says, don't worry, your request will be taken into consideration after Padme's execution. And I'm like, okay, hold on, let's pause right there for a second. So first of all, you plan on killing Padme, like that's crazy enough it is. But also you said, your request will be taken into consideration, meaning that the ships aren't anywhere close to arriving, nor have you even prepared them to be sent. Massive double cross. And the moment when Ono says, be on the alert for that Jedi, he's our only hope, that just kind of made me laugh. I'm like, oh great, our last hope is Jar Jar. Let's, oh, let's see how this goes. And that's not a, like a knock on Jar Jar. Jar Jar is just a very clumsy person. That's part of what makes him funny. That's like, what made me appeal to him in the prequel movies growing up as a kid. So here, and this is like probably my favorite part of the whole episode, is when Jar Jar gets up there, right, and he realizes that Padme escaped, and he kind of like says it out loud so everyone notices him. So then he just falls down, like he spends all this time climbing up the tower only to fall back down, but he's like hanging on by like some kind of rope or vine that's attached to this thing. So he just keeps bouncing up and down, and it's the funniest thing. For rescuing is hard jobbing. Padme gets involved in the picture. She starts taking on the battle droids. Eventually, though, like one of the supers that are there, one of the super battle droids just starts throwing detonators into the water. He sends a torpedo after Jar Jar and eventually it catches up to him. But then oh, the, the, before the torpedo hits him, the giant sea monster eats him. But it turned out all he was trying to do was save him. He was just trying to be his friend. There ends up being, you know, too many battle droids. And obviously the, the explosion kind of takes Padme out of it for a second. Just because she's like, oh no, Jar Jar's dead. And by that time, she's surrounded. Now, 3PO, meanwhile, before he gets captured and is brought into the fray, right? He goes to, like, the communications room and he contacts a clone. And the clone's like, this code's for military use only. And 3 Bill's like, look, this is a priority message from Senator Amidala. We require immediate assistance. And then the battle droids stop by and he's like, so you didn't find the Jedi then? So I would have to imagine, right, like the clone that was there. Luckily, he didn't hang up right away because then otherwise they would have really been screwed. But the fact that he's like, all right, Senator Amidala, rodeo, there's a Jedi here. Okay, there's something big going on. We got we to gotta get people here immediately. So 3PO gets taken to Padme and a bunch of destroyers show up and it's like, okay, yeah, this ain't going to end well. And then Jar Jar shows up again, but he doesn't come alone. He arrives with this sea monster. Now, I would just like to point out, you guys, for those that think about the Jar Jar is a Sith Lord theories, I would just like to point you towards a couple of things. First of all, when he puts on that cloak, he very much looks like he could be a Sith Lord. He looked right at home in that cloak. Number two, when he kissed the giant sea monster on the cheek, I could look that and go, oh, what if Jar Jar has this incredible power that we've never seen before, that like, he just kisses a creature and it automatically, it's like a Jedi mind trick, he becomes possessed and Jar Jar can summon it at will. Point number three, all of the destroyer's blaster bolts were aiming at his feet. Obviously, Jar Jar was jumping around, but you don't think that he was force pushing the blaster bolts towards the ground to avoid from being destroyed? Yeah, he looked very clumsy in that moment, but was he really ever in danger? He was just buying time for his sea monster buddy to show up. Just thought I'd put that out there for all the Jar Jar is a Sith Lord conspiracy theorists to think about. And once that sea monster gets brought into the fray, like, he just completely kicks butt, destroys all the droids. He pushes Gunray's ship into the water. Uncle Anno ends up rejoining Padme. The clones arrive, capture Gunray. Anno calls Jar Jar Master Bombad. Says you're either the bravest or the most foolish Jedi I've ever met. You're either the bravest or the most foolish Jedi. I have ever met. Chancellor gets in contact like, all right, guys, I'm sending some supply ships your way. You know, the capture of Viceroy Gunray, it's a major victory for the Republic. Great job, guys. We all did great work here today. Immediately ends the transmission. Calls Count Dooku. What the f*** just happened? Now, I know our cookie for this episode is heroes are made by the times. Obviously referring to Jar Jar. Jar Jar was a very unlikely hero, but given the circumstances right, he knew that he had to help his friend Padme. And so he did everything he could to try and rescue her, to protect her, all that stuff, right? But there's also another line that Padme says at the end of this episode that could very much be taken like a cookie as well. Uncle Anno is asking for Padme to forgive her, and Padme says, It's the Republic that should be asking for your forgiveness, my old friend. 
and then says, far too often we forget that our most important allies are not always the most powerful. And that can be applied in many ways. That can be taken just in the everyday life that we live, right? The people that we surround ourselves with. It could also be taken in like a world sense, right? With like countries and countries having allies. I mean, look at it in this sense, right? Like Rhodia, yeah, they may not be the most powerful people, but I mean, surely they're able to provide in some way to help the Republic, right? Even if like that plan was just like giving them a base in the outer rim, right? Like even Chancellor says, you've moved into enemy territory. Maybe the Republic could have established a base there, like an outer rim base. The giant Quizel Maw lets out a giant roar at the end and that's kind of how the episode ends. Now, one more thing about that giant creature, you guys, that apparently that was an old Ralph McQuarrie design, according to Dave Filoni uh, in the featurette, that this was an old Ralph McQuarrie design that I think goes back to as far as Dagobah. Could you imagine that giant creature being in the swamps of Dagobah? Like, imagine that's the thing that attacks R2 when he gets drowned in the water. So overall, you guys, this was a really enjoyable episode for me. The music, the story, the characters, the comedy, all of it. Look, I can understand, like, if you don't like Jar Jar, you're probably not gonna like this episode, and that's cool. For me personally, I enjoyed it. But that's where you guys gotta let me know in the comments below. What did you guys think of this episode? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Obviously, make sure we're being respectful of everybody's opinions, all right? I like to have respectable, normal conversations with people instead of just the, you know, online social media like, oh, your opinion sucks, or oh, you're so wrong about this, and, and people just getting like so angry about nothing. It's like I've had conversations with people about Star Wars all the time and stuff that, you know, I'll agree with people on, things that I'll disagree with people on, but we don't sit there trying to, like, rip each other's limbs out while we do it. So it kind of just goes without saying here on my channel, if you're gonna comment on stuff, please be respectful. Next week, we're gonna be talking about Star Wars The Clone Wars Season 1, Episode 9, Cloak of Darkness. A much different episode than what we get here, but it still continues on with the Newt Gunray story that we're telling here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, share this video with others to help support the channel, and I will see you guys next time.